Now that we have a solid model, there are several things we can do to this to further enhance it. For example, let's head up to the top of the screen and select our extrusion tools. From there, we're going to choose Extrude Cut and then just grab this cross section. What that's going to do is cut right through that solid model. Now how about adding some chamfers? We'll go back up to the top of the screen and from there we'll select our chamfer tool. Let's put a 250 thousandths chamfer on that side and one on that side. That looks very good. So what started off as a very simple set of wireframe geometry, we converted into a surface and then into a matrix of surfaces and then we easily took those surfaces and converted them into a solid model. At that point we're able to come in and further enhance the project. If we want to get rid of our extra geometry, an easy way to do that is just select by color, select everything that's blue and hit the delete key on the keyboard. Now let's take a look at manufacturing. One CNC provides several powerful tools for manufacturing. And just like geometry, you're going to find that manufacturing is very easy and straightforward to use. On the right hand side of the screen, we have our NC Manager. Now this is where all of your machining operations take place. For example, we have machining operations for two and a half axis work. These are called our stock tool paths. And we also have operations for three axis work, or for solids and surfaces. This is called our SMT mold tool paths. Notice too that as I select an operation, one CNC provides a nice graphic over on the right hand side. This helps us learn the software and it also helps explain exactly what we're trying to do. This holds true with inside of the stock tool paths as well. Simply select on an operation and one CNC will throw a graphic over on the right hand side. Now let's take a look at applying an operation to our part. Now let's apply a pocketing operation to our part. We're going to head over here to the NC Manager and from our stock tool pass we're going to select a pocketing operation. All we have to do now is just select the boundary that we want to pocket. At this point we have to define our tool parameters. You can do this manually just by typing in whatever values you want. And as you do that notice how the graphic up here changes parametrically. Very very nice. If you want to select a tool from our library just left hand click go to the library tab, select the subcategory and select whatever tool you'd like to use and then click OK. What about tool holders? Well if you want to use tool holders that's great. You can also modify them as well. Just come down here to where it says holder and if you click edit you can parametrically change the dimensions of your holder as well. Optionally if you want to you could come up here and select from a predefined set of tool holders. Just grab the tool holder that you want to use and then click OK. What about speeds and feeds? Well we can automatically generate those for you. Just come down here to where it says stock material, select whatever material you want to use and then select accept. At that point the speeds and feeds will automatically be updated. Also note that the tool library and material library can be edited to your satisfaction. Let's click next. I'm just going to use the defaults here for our depth of cut. Notice too that within our pocketing we provide high speed and traditional. We're going to go with high speed pocketing here just going to grab all the defaults and click OK. Making modifications to your toolpath is also very straightforward. For example, let's say we selected the wrong pocket for our operation. Just move over to the NC Manager, right click on the operation and select Repick Path. All we have to do is take our cursor, grab the appropriate geometry, right click and one CNC quickly updates that. Now making edits to your toolpath is also very simple and there's lots of ways to do it. One technique is just right click and select edit operation. Once you do that you can go in, make your changes and you're finished. Another technique is just double click the operation, select edit operation and then same thing, just make your changes and then you're done. Now there's a third way you can make edits that's unique to one CNC. Simply highlight the operation you want to make changes to and you'll notice that within the NC Manager you have access to a lot of the important parameters within that operation. For example spindle speed. I'll come down here, type in a new spindle speed, click the check button and we're done. Now what about simulation? One CNC provides two very powerful methods for simulating toolpath. Let's take a look at those. Just take your cursor over to the right side of the screen and right click. From there we're going to select simulate. We're going to define our stock. Once we've done that we can click OK and there's the tool removing stock. As this takes place you can rotate, you can pan, you can zoom in and zoom out. In fact you can really adjust the display any way that you'd like. On top of that you can also dynamically cross section. Head up here, select your cross section style and then by moving the slider left or right we can dynamically cross section. It's a great way to get in close and see exactly what's happening while you're cutting a component. 
Let's take a look at another way we can preview ToolPaths. Take our cursor over to the right side of the screen. Again, we're going to right click, but instead of simulate, we're going to choose preview ToolPaths. This has the advantage of showing you the tool, the toolpath, the component, and all of your fixturing. Of course, you can also zoom in, zoom out, rotate, anything that you'd like to do to adjust the display. Now let's take a look at something else that's unique to one CNC, and that's the machining templates. Machining templates are designed to save you time when manufacturing. Let me demonstrate how they work. We're going to open up our previous pocketing operation, and if we look to the left of the dialog box, you'll see a template area. What happens is, every time you execute an operation within one CNC, in fact any operation, one CNC will record or remember all those parameters and save those parameters as a template over here. What's nice about that is if you come back in and use that operation again, you can simply select on the template and one CNC will automatically fill out all the parameters. Let me demonstrate that. We're going to head up here to our stock toolpaths and let's perform a profile. We're going to go ahead and just grab this. We're going to climb cut. We're going to right click. And just like with the pocketing operation, we have our templates over on the left. Now here's two previous templates that were automatically saved for us. If we want to use these parameters, all we have to do is just simply double click. Watch what happens when I double click this template. All these parameters get filled out. Come back here, select that template, and all the parameters are filled out. Now all we have to do is simply click the next button, and we're finished. So one CNC has a very nice tool called machining templates. It's unique to one CNC. It's a way that one CNC learns how you program and it will definitely help you expedite your machining process. Now let's take a look at post processors. All one CNC systems ship with several post processors. What's nice is that all these post processors are very straightforward and easy to work with. Let me demonstrate that. Let's say that for this part we need to generate code for a FIDAL. To do that, move your cursor to the right side of the screen, double click, head up to the top of the dialog box and select your FIDAL. Once you do that, click OK. Now we're ready to generate CNC code. So we're going to double click again. This time we're going to select post, give our program a name, click save. We're going to overwrite that file. And here's the code for the FIDAL. Now if you want to change the code to a Haas, not a problem. We'll go back over here, double click, back up to the top of the dialog box. Now we're going to scroll down, we're going to select the Haas and click OK. Now all we have to do is just generate the code for the Haas. So we'll go back up to post, give our program a name, we're going to overwrite that file, and here's the code now for a Haas. Now let's say you want to make edits to a post processor or make a brand new post. That's just as easy. Just head over back to the right side of the screen and double click. Instead of selecting post, we're now going to select setup. Here's the workbench for working on your post processor you're going to find that you're going to have complete access to all areas of the post. What else is also very nice is that you don't have to know any machining language or programming language. Just go in, make your edits, and click OK. In fact, once you click OK, one CNC compiles the post processor in the background and you're instantly ready to use it. So in summary, one CNC is a very straightforward and efficient and easy to use program. It doesn't matter whether you're creating geometry or applying toolpath. I thank you so much for watching these videos and I look forward to working with you in the future.